This time, I'm not going to leave you to your own devices because this guy looks weird, okay? Um, it does seem to come a bit out of left field. This is actually a really special result which you um, may or may not encounter in year 12, but it's called, because it's a special result, it has a name. It's called the AMGM inequality. If you're curious about what that means, you can ask me at the end, but knowing what that means doesn't help you solve the question that much. So I'm not going to worry about the meaning for now. What can we do with this? My big idea, my big logic, and my technique strategy here was start with something you know, and then move to, use logic to move to stuff you don't know. Okay? Here, my idea is, when you're not sure what to do, try and prove that something is, with regard to an inequality, try to prove that something's positive or negative. That tends to be a lot easier. You know lots of things about positive numbers and lots of things about negative numbers. I'll demonstrate it for you. Here's what we're going to do. You guys made this suggestion to me right for the very first question today. I'm going to move everything onto one side. So you can see if I subtracted the square root of AB from both sides, uh, then this is what I would get on the left hand side. What will be left on the right hand side? Zero. So I want this thing to be greater than or equal to zero. So I don't want it to be negative is what I'm saying. Okay? So if I can muck around with this and twist it into a form to demonstrate this thing has to be greater than or equal to zero, then I'm home. Okay? So here's what I'm going to do. I admit that this doesn't look intuitive at first, but I'm going to borrow some of the knowledge from our um, idea of factorization from before to try and get this thing together. So first step, you have two things, one's a fraction. What do you normally do when you've got two things and one's a fraction? You just com combine them, right? And then you just got one fraction. One fraction is better than two fractions. So that's going to be a plus b take away what when you get on that common denominator? 2 square root ab, like that. Okay. I'm going to shuffle it just a little bit to see if this helps you to spot that this is something that you've seen before. I'm going to write it like this, which seems like it's no different, right? Because it isn't different, it's the same thing. But that numerator there, that numerator is something you've seen before. It's just dressed up a little bit differently. Hmm. Something minus two other things plus something else. Something minus... This is a square, isn't it? Now, maybe it's not immediately like, you're like, what do you mean? What square is there? Let me rewrite it again to try and clarify that it's a square. A is the square of the square root of A, right? Like, this would give me this. Um, by the same logic, B is the square root of B squared, yes? So this is actually square root of A, square root of B. The reason I thought of that is because I've got the square root of A and the square root of B in here, right? So this, in fact, is two lots of square root A, square root of B. That's all divided by 2. Now maybe it's a little clearer that this is a perfect square. What's going to be in the brackets? Root A minus, it's a minus because of this guy, right? The square root of B. Yes, are you happy with that? Now I pushed you in that direction to try and say to you, hey, 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 this is something that you know. But obviously you're going to encounter questions like this and you don't have me pushing in front of you and like a little voice on your shoulder. So one of the skills you're practicing here is things often are things that you know about, but we intentionally try and obscure those to see, do you really recognize? Do you really see that there's a pattern here that you actually have been using for years now? Okay, what was I trying to prove again? Go back to the beginning, what was I trying to prove? Yeah, bigger than or, or equal to zero, right? Do you see I've pretty much achieved that, right? Because look, you've got a number, take away a number, and then you square it, right? Well, in the numbers that we know about, that thing has to be, like the smallest that could possibly be is zero. Um, that's what square numbers will do. There are numbers that you square and you get negatives, but we're not dealing with those at the moment, okay? So therefore, I can say this thing here is greater than or equal to zero since... This guy here, that has to be greater than or equal to zero. Does that make sense? It's a square, right? So the smallest it could possibly be is zero, but it, it's very likely larger than that. Okay, no matter what number you put in for A and B, you, so long as they're, um, <coughs> excuse me, the numbers we've been dealing with all along, 
root 5 minus root 2, root 100 minus root pi, whatever you like, you square it, you'll get something that obeys this law. Dividing by 2 doesn't change that. So now I have this, because that's what was on the left hand side all along. And so it's only one step to get to the actual result I was supposed to prove. Therefore, this is bigger than this. Okay? So that's kind of handy. 